He is back, of course. Ex-Merrill Lynch CEO John Thane has been tapped to lead commercial lender CIT. For some reaction, I'm joined now by Brian Charles. He's a debt and equity analyst at RW Press Pritch and Company. And uh, Brian, great to have you back on the program. Thanks for having uh, me. Talking about CIT again. Uh, your first, uh, your initial thoughts about John Thane leading the company. This is a positive development. When the company emerged from bankruptcy, there was some speculation in the market that they were really just restructuring themselves to go into runoff mode over the next several years and pay back the bondholders. But this, I think, sends a signal that they are really serious about trying to develop their bank strategy and remain a viable entity going forward. First order of business for him? I think it is to bring on a management team that I think can add to his credibility uh, that I think he brings to the position of CEO to, as they present their bank strategy to the regulators. Over the long term, the company is trying to develop business out of their bank. And over the longer term, I think they will have to develop a uh, deposit gathering franchise, probably a large component of that will be retail deposit gathering. And I think he is in a good position to bring on a management team that will give CIT a clean slate with its regulators as it tries to present that plan. Well, cost of funding is obviously the big issue at CIT. That's what drove them into uh, into this bankruptcy position. What can John Thane bring to that uh, table that's different from what other CEOs could have brought? Well, I think it's just this incremental credibility. Essentially, the company right now has restructured itself to give it uh, some time to run off its non-core businesses without having to access more capital from the capital markets because the cash flow from those runoff businesses will be able to pay off a short-term debt. Mm -hmm. Over time, though, they will need to recapitalize themselves, but fortunately some of their very expensive debt is callable in January of 2012. If they can present a strategy to the regulators that is, you know, is viable, regulators pass on them. Um, you know, developing a retail deposit gathering franchise, mm -hmm. they may present that to the markets as a way to allow the markets to feel comfortable about recapitalizing the company. Well, how soon could that, what timeline are we talking about for the deposit gathering, but also just to overall have this structure in place before their debts have to be called back? Well, I think uh, over the next couple of years, basically 2010 and 2011, the company, I think, will have the cash flow to pay off its very expensive debt that it, uh, that it incurred as it prepared to go into bankruptcy. Uh, beyond that, I think they will put in place what I think is a, a bank that doesn't need deposits just yet because it can be funded with cash flow from its ongoing businesses essentially through equity infusions into the bank from the holding company where they uh, where the loans are being run off right now. Okay. But that will be a two-year process after that I think they would need a, a longer-term strategy. Okay. On the top 10 list of things to do, repaying TARP, where should that be? Well, uh, essentially the government technically lost its TARP investment through the restructuring. So, you know, to the extent the company needs to repay TARP, I, there's no set figure or anything like that. I just think they will need to be more of a corporate citizen going forward to uh, essentially, you know, increase the small business lending component of the business, which, you know, John Thane has specifically called out as a strategic uh, objective. Of right. Sales. Indeed. Uh, very strategic for the company. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Brian, for joining us. Brian Charles of RW Press Pritch.